we're going to move on to the literary heritage now. Um, Ozymandias is a poem that's about 200 years old. I've probably been reading it for about 20 years now. And it's a poem that still engages me. It's probably one of the most memorable things I've ever read. And I, I don't really know why that is, but um, it is the case. And I want to say this about reading this poem, um, or reading poems that are older. <coughs> Some of the best poems last. Older poems last. Uh, we have fragments of Sappho and uh, only glimpses of some poets. Uh, and people have preserved what they've said for thousands of years because of what they say matters. Um, all old things aren't necessarily good, but some things that have lasted and meant something for subsequent generations, um, especially the best art, um, they last for a reason. Um, as one poet says, uh, the best poetry is news that remains news. In a few lines, you can have an entire era evoked, a sensibility, a philosophy, a world of emotion. Uh, in a few words, in a few images, you are connected to people uh, thousands of years, hundreds or thousands of years away from you, and you're intimate with these people um, through the art of poetry. When you read poems, that are older, you may find the language more distant. And that is good. You need to become distant from your time. You need to learn that there are other people thinking other things. And that's why I love these group of character poems. Um, you need to read carefully and slowly. Uh, and you need to read the poem a lot. Then you need to read quickly and sloppily. You need to read over and over again. If you want, you can look up interpretations. You can use mine, you can go on the internet, whatever you want that way. But, you know, it's not really going to mean much to you. A poem starts to mean something if it starts speaking to you. And there's a real pleasure in figuring it out like a puzzle. When you dip your hands into the language, when you get lost in it. I mean, this particular poem is a complete mystery. Um, it suggests so much and it answers so very little. Uh, one other thing. In this section on the exam, you aren't being asked to talk about the culture where these poems come from. In fact, that AO is completely absent. In fact, some guides and um, will invite you to know more about this person who apparent who wrote the poem, yes, his time period. And for me, one of the things with poetry that I'd like you to think about is actually just not thinking about that. Oh, let me see if I can cover that up, bro. I don't want you thinking about the author. I don't want you thinking about England. I want you to treat the poem as its own object, as its own thing that needs to be taken apart, that can engage you, that can mystify you, that can matter to you. If you can find poetry in your own life and in your own time that matters, that's one thing. If you can find poetry from the past uh, that speaks to you and matters to you, well, that can help develop your historical sensibility and your ability to feel emotions with those people around you. And you don't need to know about Percy Beast Shelley, and you don't need to know about the construction of this poem to feel its force and its mystery. Ozymandias by Percy B. Shelley. I met a traveler from an antique land who said, To vast and trunkless legs of stone stand in the desert. Near them on the sand, half sunk, a shattered visage lies, whose frown and wrinkled lip and sneer of cold command tell that its sculptor well those passions read which yet survive, stamped on these lifeless things. The hand that mocked them and the heart that fed and on the pedestal these words appear. My name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look on my works, ye mighty, and despair. Nothing beside remains. Round the decay of that colossal wreck, boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away.
Okay, I'm going to give you a summary of the poem, which is what I've been doing as a second step for most of these uh, videos. Um, and for this one, because it's a poem that means so much to me, I feel hesitant because um, unlocking its base meaning also may remove one of the pleasures of puzzling through what's actually going on. Um, but of course, this is the AQA GCSE exam, and if anything, was built to flatten out the intricacies and magic of literature, this exam system is that thing. Um, so when I try and give you base readings, I am not stitching up the entire meaning of the poem. Of course I'm not, because the poem outlasts my summary. Um, also, the way the poem is put together and assembled is is really crucial to the magic of the poem and I, I don't know how much of that I'm going to be discussing so I don't want to unlock everything about the poem but I'm gonna talk about some basic things uh, the poem is layered so the speaker of the poem tells the story of a traveler who himself uh, uh, discovered the ruins of a great emperor and he describes uh, the smashed up statues. He imagines the face of this leader. He envisions an entire world just from these fragments. Um, and at the base of the statue, he comes across an inscription. And we see the words of the emperor. And in a sense, actually, the third voice comes into the poem of Ozymandias, this great man. Uh, he actually just pops up towards the end of the poem. Um, and he says, "My name is Ozymandias, King of Kings. Look on me, work. Look on my works, ye mighty and despair." These will, these lines are perhaps some of the more famous in the poem. These lines are, of course, juxtaposed to the vast emptiness that follows, the colossal wreck, the bareness of the poem, um, the emptiness uh, and the loneliness at the end of the poem. And this juxtaposition is is crucial how you understand it, it's crucial to interpreting the poem. And there are many different ways uh, you can interpret that. But it's important that you know that's the simple thing going on. The theme, there are many basic themes uh, for this poem, including death, remembrance, how you remembered. The classic ones um, are the ability of art to preserve. We saw this in, um, in Clown Punk. You'll see this in um, My Last Duchess. Uh, the ability for art to make something survive that the actual world destroys is something. Lately, I mean, as I grew older, I think there's another theme that I think is interesting about piecing together history and imagining the past. But I ask you, you know, on reading it, and I hope you've read it more than once, you're not going to get very much off of reading it just once. Um, what meaning can you find inside it? What themes speak to you? What are you interested in? What questions do you have? 